Hi there, my name is Damien and in today's demonstration I'm going to show you how you can use Power Automate to split an Excel workbook with multiple worksheets into individual workbooks with a single worksheet. And so without further ado, let's jump into my demonstration. So here we have an Excel workbook and we have five worksheets. And so my first sheet, I have some word art, similarly in my second sheet. In my third, I have a list of numbers. Fourth, I have a table. And in my fifth, I have some letters. Now, my aim today is to pass this file onto my Cloudflow, and it will work through the individual worksheets here, creating five workbooks and each containing one of the five worksheets that we see here. So your scenario might be that you maintain an Excel workbook and you want to share just an individual sheet with uh, one of your colleagues or customers. And so this Power Automate flow will allow you to systematically split your workbook into the individual workbooks with singular worksheets. Now I'm going to open up my browser and we're going to have a very quick look at my cloud flow. Um, it's all based on when a file is created. So at the moment, if I drop a file into a particular folder on OneDrive, this Cloudflow will launch. And then I use two individual Office scripts, one to return the worksheets that are contained within the workbook, and another, we see here, to delete um, sheets from a workbook. And so what, what I do is I count the number of worksheets in a file, and return those that number or those names in an array and then I create individual copies of that original file so if I have five worksheets I'll create five original copies of the file and I'll delete everything but one of those worksheets from each of the files using this apply to each loop so I will go through this in more detail for those that are interested but I think what I'll do now is I'll put the flow into test mode I will drop a file across into my location on OneDrive, which is the file that I showed you earlier. And now that that file is on there, we'll leave the cloud flow to it because it takes maybe about one to two minutes to complete this process. So it's not the quickest of processes, but it certainly achieves what you're looking for. And whilst we're waiting for this to run, I'm going to jump into Excel. And a little tip here is if you ever want to launch a new instance of Excel, you can type in excel.new, same with Word. Word.new will create a new Word document in your OneDrive. And all I want to do here for the demonstration is to jump into this Automate tab that you see. And so this is now within the script window, and I can click on all scripts, and we have our code editor. And you can see my two scripts, both get sheet names and delete sheets. So if we jump into my first script, which is get sheet names, it's relatively straightforward. There are no input variables, there's only an output, which is returned here. And so I simply define a variable sheets as the worksheets that are within my uh, workbook that this script is called on. And then I simply map the sheet name into an array called names and I return that array back to my Cloudflow. So my Cloudflow will simply get an array of the worksheets that are within a workbook. If we then look at delete sheets, it's slightly more complex but still pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, we do have an input in this case, it's looking for an input as an array which is the sheets to delete. So if we supply an array of three sheet names, we will then loop through these sheet names here and delete each of them by name. So we're simply defining a variable here, a worksheet, based on each of the objects within the array, and then we're deleting that worksheet by name. Now I do have some additional code at the, the bottom here, which I'll just highlight. Um, I don't actually need it for the purpose of this demo, but when I was testing, I decided it might be useful to return the number of sheets that are in my new work uh, book. Uh, and so it's very much the same as the original script that I just showed you in the get worksheets. Again, I, get, I have a variable for sheets, I get the worksheets, I apply the names to an array 
but rather than returning the array, I decided to perform a length um, expression on that array. And so I'd always expect the return number to be one because I'd only expect there to be one um, sheet left in this workbook after this script is run. So anyway, if we jump back onto our Cloudflow, which thankfully has completed successfully, and therefore if we jump into our OneDrive, I have a uh, split files folder here, and you can see that it's created five individual Excel files, and each of those files are actually prefixed with the name of the sheet uh, and postfixed with the original file name, so it makes it very easy to identify. And if I click on sheet one, you can see that we have the word art for sheet one and we only have the one sheet left in this workbook. Uh, similarly, if I click on a table, we have our table in our table worksheet um, and no other worksheets left in this workbook. And just to make things a bit more interesting, I have also converted the original Excel file into a PDF. So again, if we look at a table, we can click on this file here, which is a PDF. You can see that our table has been passed nicely to this particular PDF file. So I think what I'll do now is if I jump onto my cloud flow, we can maybe walk through how this was put together and I'll go into edit mode for that. So like I mentioned previously, we have the trigger when a file is created based on a folder location within OneDrive. You could, for instance, have a file that's coming in via email, um, or you could have a manual trigger based on uh, a fixed file that you want to split on a regular basis. And then using my first script, which is to get the worksheets via, via the script, um, I have to pass the file identifier uh, in order for Office scripts to work. So this is one of the hurdles that I had to overcome. It wasn't very obvious when you're using the Office Scripts action, it expects you to literally select a file. Uh, if you don't select a file and you try to supply a path via um, your own uh, expression, it won't work. So the only way I've managed to get this to work is to use the file identifier and that works for both a OneDrive and for SharePoint, depending on where your file is stored. And so you can see here, I call the script called get sheet names and by return, we will get an array of the sheets that are within that workbook. Now, in order to allow me to create multiple copies of the file, I simply use the get file content action, which again, you have in both OneDrive and SharePoint. I'm using that file identifier and that allows me to get the content of the file. No files are being created at this point. So within our apply to each, what I'm doing now is I'm taking the results from this get worksheets uh, action. And so we, we would have returned five individual worksheets at this point. And then I go into a filter array. And the idea of the filter array is to remove all but one of the worksheets from the array, because of course we want to leave one worksheet. So thinking about this, this has got worksheet one, two, three, four, five. And uh, what we're going to do in the filter array here is we're going to take this original array. We're going to take, um, have a look at all the items within that array. And we need to see if they're not equal to the current item. And the current item is the item that we're currently running this apply to each loop on. So the first time it runs, it'll be sheet one. And so the, the filtered array will be an array of all the worksheets minus or uh, without the first worksheet based on this current item. So I hope that makes sense. We started with five worksheets in array. We will now have four for this first loop. Then I go ahead and create a file. And that file, as we saw in the split files folder, it has a prefix, which is based on the current item. And we have the file name as a postfix. And the file content is purely a copy of that original file. So at this point, the file will have all five worksheets in it. This is when we call the delete scripts, delete sheets script. Um, again, based on the, um, the file ID from the create file this time, rather than the uh, 
um, trigger. So make sure you use the correct dynamic value here based on the create file. Um, and we're calling the delete sheet script and we are using the list of worksheets based on our filter. So this filter will have four sheets and we're gonna pass four sheets to our delete sheet script and that will then leave us with the single sheet. Then for the purpose of the demo, I did a quick PDF conversion, simply converting the file, again using the file ID of the created file, selecting PDF as the target type and creating a PDF using the, the file name from above and the file content from above. And that really completes the cloud flow. In order to just see it uh, through the history, we have the, the trigger here when a file is, is created and you'll, you can see um, the file identifier there. We have the get worksheets via script and you can see here that's returned the five worksheets as part of an array and it's this array that we're going to loop through. The get file content is simply getting the file content as we said earlier. Then within the apply to each, this will run five times because we have five sheets. And remember, we're passing the values from that worksheets script. The filter array, we start with five, but we end up with four. And you'll see the first time it runs, it's removed sheet one. If I move on to the second one, is it going to load? Yep. So the second one here, we start with five. We've now lost sheet two and so on. If I go on to three, you can see that lots of numbers is missing from the, the result here. And then we go ahead and simply create a file using the prefix of the missing item, because that's the current item. We delete the sheets by passing that array. So you can see here we've passed an array of four sheets. I mentioned earlier that I have a result of how many or, or the length of the array of sheet names, and in this case it's one. We'd always expect it to be one, and I was potentially going to use that uh, as a method for, for checking that this has, co has completed okay. And then simply the last two actions are to convert the file and to actually physically create the file. Because remember, once you've converted, you still need to create that file. So that really ends the end-to-end end -end demonstration of uh, how this solution was built. Um, one of the things I noticed whilst uh, testing is that uh, if I'm converting an Excel file into a PDF and that file is wider than the um, print area, so we have the example here of lots of letters, if I go into the PDF, which is lots of letters, I actually end up with two files with the columns spilled over. It is actually possible to format this so it appears on one sheet. And I will do a video on this later, but uh, just to, to show you how it's done, you can simply set the uh, print layout area. When you go to print, you can select fit all columns on one page and uh, Excel will remember that setting that you've changed. And next time that you run that uh, PDF conversion, that whole file or the whole um, set of columns will appear on a single PDF. Now it might not always be possible to do that yourself and so you can in fact using Office scripts from when I tested it anyway uh, record that action. So if I go into record actions you can see now that I'm recording an Office script and this is one of the great things about Office scripts is that even if you're not a coder you can build up a list of actions and see the, the code yourself but if I go to file and print, and I'm just going to change it to no scaling, and then I'm going to change it back to fit all columns on one page, and then go back to the worksheet, we can see that despite what I've just promised, it's not recorded. Why did that happen? Let's try that again. Click on print, no scaling. I need to hit print. Maybe that's what it was. Cancel. There we go. It's done it this time. Um, so if I just go and change, um, great thing about a demo, change it back to fit all columns onto one page, hit the print. I'm going to cancel that. And if I stop the recording action, I can then go into edit that code. 
and I can see the changes that have been made. So we've got set filt, fil, fit all columns onto one page scaling for selected sheet. I can actually uh, copy that and use that in an, in an Office script that I can call from Power Automate on any workbook before converting to PDF and that will then allow me to scale that page for PDF conversion. So I hope that didn't get too confusing at the end there. I confused myself a little bit, but I will cover that in a, in a future video, make sure I get it right. Um, I hope that's been useful. Uh, and if you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them below. And uh, as usual, please make sure that you like and subscribe. Thanks very much for watching.